So, I have a question um, about distances. I think someone wins, so I'll let you ask. I'll let you answer last. But how far did everyone come this morning? About how far? Who's the closest person that lives uh, close to the church? I think. Okay, you guys. About about um, about a mile. Okay, cool. And um, does anyone else live like? Who thinks they live the furthest away? If you were to guess. How, how long does it take you, Pat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he, came from he, he gets to go last. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll, I'll say Dunsinville. Dunsinville. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
going to go a little bit outside of that into this age, and I'm going to use this. Now, we can just turn off some of these lights. It's okay if you can't see me. Um, everyone knows what I look like, right? So if I, if I disappear, it's okay, right? You're like, okay, I still know what he looks like. It's, he looks kind of like the guy from last time, but with longer hair, right? So, okay. So this is, uh, this is really cool. So the concept is the bigness of God. And so I think you can just press um, space bar and it'll go. So, okay. Can, can we see this? Yeah. A little bit? Okay. I want to make sure you guys can track with this because this is a little bit beyond me. In fact, part of this was meant to be a little bit overwhelming. Is that okay? Yeah. Because God's a little overwhelming. In fact, a lot overwhelming, right? So if you're a little overwhelmed, it's okay because that's kind of the effect I wanted. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, cool. Isaiah 55, 9, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, okay? So the concept here is he's making a comparison, all right? In comparison to how high the heavens are, this is a plural, heavens. So in comparison to how high the heavens are, so is the comparison of how the distances between your thoughts and your ways and his ways, okay? Do we kind of get that? It's like a comparison, right? <clears throat> so if I said uh, my patience is, is about as, as long as, as me to um, the Bible, that's, that's a comparison, right? So it, it. So his ways in comparison are as far above our ways as the heavens are from the earth. Now, there's a couple different words for heaven in Scripture. Heavens, there's a plural there. So, um, and depending on how it's presented, sometimes heavens are the sky itself. Uh, we see that in Genesis when it speaks of the flood and different areas where it's talking about the actual, um, so the, the sphere around the earth. Um, whether you believe it's flat or not, it doesn't matter. There's still a sphere there. Can we agree with that? Okay, so there's still something above us, the firmament, right? That is one of the heavens. He talks about a couple different heavens in Scripture, and then Paul says take him to the third heaven. Okay, this, is, this isn't enough preaching on the different types of heavens. Just the point to say that there are different heavens. So there's different levels of him being higher than us. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is open to God being a little bit above us, to, to the firmament above us, to way beyond any of that, to, depending on your theologies, even further than 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 that. Okay? All right. The bigness of God. Okay, so I wanted to really grasp this concept as much as humanly possible. So we're going to go to the next slide. So this is going to be sort of comparing different things. So Isaiah 55 9 speaks of God being beyond us and above us, right? And there are so many verses to this. God sees, God knows, God creates, God does all these things, potentially in a realm way beyond we can comprehend. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be God, right? Can we kind of comprehend that? So this idea of, of it's beyond us, it's beyond what we hear, it's beyond what we conceive, it's beyond what we can think. So it says, since ancient times, no one has heard, no one has perceived, no eye has seen, any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Okay, so no, no one can really grasp it, right? No one has seen God and lived. All these concepts, it's beyond, beyond, beyond. Okay, beyond. Beyond. And Ephesians 3.20, right? That's one of my favorite verses. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us. Each one of these could be its own sermon, okay? This is actually a, a, a verse that God came to my wife, that she would be beyond anything I could imagine or hope for. Um, so, but, but these concepts of, he's able to do that, okay? This concept of imagine the most amazing thing, the most amazing place, the most amazing opportunity, the most amazing, whatever you can imagine, it's not enough. Your imagination is limited. You can't even imagine it. Okay, this concept is just all throughout scripture. It's beyond, it's beyond, it's beyond. Pew, 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 beyond what we can think, what we can imagine. All right? Okay. 
Um, and there are more verses than this, but this is this is this is good. I like this. This helps me stay on track. I like to go off. I'm going off track right now, describing it. Do you understand why I do this? Now here's the fun part for me, because I love um, I love science. I love well, I don't love math at all. But I love science and I love history and I love these concepts. So something that I can grasp. So this was cool to me. Okay, that's a thumb with a smiley face on it. Okay, so does everybody kind of know a little bit of the metric system and how we can um, measure things? So a thumb is about an inch, roughly. We, we learned that in school. Um, a thumb is an inch. So I have a picture of a thumb that's one inch. All right. So what happens when you put 12 thumbs or 12 inches together? You get a foot, which is kind of ironic because it's part of the hand becomes the foot. That's the whole thing. <laughs> and then you, you put three of those guys together, three feet, three rulers together, and you get a yard. Oh. Thumb, foot, yard. All right, so we're getting a little bigger. And now you put... 1,760 yards together, you get one mile, or 1.6 kilometers. I put them both up there, just in case you ever go to Canada. Whatever the speed limit is, it's in kilometers, okay? So, so don't go miles, okay? It's different. Uh, they do drive on the same side of the road, though. We learned that pretty quick. Okay, so anyway, I put them both there because different measurements are in different types of systems. So, all right. So that's a lot of yards. And then, go back... So now it's going even further. So I'm going to slow down just a little bit here. Okay. So an inch, a foot, a yard, a mile. A mile is really far. Anybody run a mile in school? It is far. Okay, it doesn't feel far because you're always driving it. But when you start to run it, or you get in trouble in basketball or whatever, and they make you run a mile or a mile, then it starts to get far. Okay, this is far. Okay, a mile is far. Does anybody think a mile is not far? A mile is far. Okay. So now, we're going to try and go into an astronomical unit. So these are measurements that we don't need to use. They're too big for us, but as NASA and all these guys use them. So basically, they have the distance from the sun to the Earth is its own unit. And they create a unit out of it it's called an, astrono an astronomical unit. It's 149.6 million kilometers. OK? OK. So. And that wasn't in miles, and I have the conversion of miles, but it's something um, a little bit less than that. So it would be like 1 to 1 or something. Still, that, a, a million? A million miles? Like, I'm trying to comprehend how far it is from here to home to China, and then I have to think about the sun. And then, okay, so it's astronomical. Get it? It's astronomical. <laughs> that's, I don't know if that's where it's from, but it should be where it's from. It's a good joke. Huh? That's God. God. God's a comedian too. That should be a sermon one day because that's amazing. God loves puns. All right, back to the sun. See, this is why I have this. Isn't it great? Okay, so next slide, please. I, I am prefacing all of my sentences for next slides with please now, so I'm not rude. I'm saying please in advance. So, okay, so now we're going even further. All right, so there's a whole bunch here, but basically it just keeps getting further and further with how they... They scale things. Uh, next slide, please. And then I have some numbers. Yes, those are numbers. OK. There it is. I did bad math. Good thing I wrote it up there. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to lie about that number. It's 93 million miles. OK. 93 million miles. So let's now, now we're going to have to get further than that. So now we have to think even further about light traveling. Light travels 186,000 miles per second. I. I'm not even going to try and describe what that is. And the total distance of, one, of light travels in one year is, <laughs> is, uh, is that a billion? No, it's a trillion. It's a trillion. That's a trillion. Five trillion, eight hundred and eighty billion, million. No, I just say five trillion, five point eight trillion. Okay, so with all those zeros. All right. So lights traveling like. Now. Huh? How I'm many? Not I'm not even going to. You don't have to write it down. Okay. <laughs> I kind of wanted to do this when I spoke about Solomon to get you to grasp how rich he was, and I didn't. That's a side note. See, this is what I wanted to do with that. So here it goes. That's what we're preparing. So, 
It's far, okay? Can we grasp that that is a very, 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 very far distance, okay? Uh, next slide, please. I hope I'm doing this right. So the light travels from here to, light travels from here to uh, the sun of the earth and half a second. Oh, that's, a, that's great. <laughs> I, I don't know how they make these measurements. It's, it's, a, it's crazy that they can see these things. Um, okay. So let's go with how far we can see, how far our, our telescopes and all those things can see. So that's what we can observe. Our observable universe is, okay, so we just talked about miles. Okay, now we're talking about light years. So times all that by light years. Is that trillion? Are we still on trillions? Now we're in billions. Now we're, we're back in billions. Well, we're back in billions, but we're thinking about the last trillions that we're adding to the billions. So just, yeah. just kind of, right. So this is supposed to kind of be crazy. You're not supposed to totally understand it, okay? His ways are higher than our ways, okay? So 93 billion square light years wide. So as far as, as, far as we can observe in the universe, okay, is far. Okay, and if the heavens are above that, if if he, it says he can cut, he can mark off the universe with his hands. All right, he's he's that much bigger, so he's beyond that, right? Okay, so the bigness of God, and I I believe this is where I I think I have a video just after this, where I'm trying to get you to grasp how far out. So the concept here is the distance from the from you to the outer edge of this, assuming that's all there is, who knows, maybe there's more, right? And God is beyond that in some of the ways that he thinks. Okay, so, so I think this is the next, let's see if the next slide. Uh, there might be another. Oh, that's, oh, even more number. No more numbers. We're going to the next one. So we'll, we'll click again. I think this might be. Yeah, all right. So I might have to click to the beginning because it may be in the middle. Sometimes it restarts. Okay, perfect. The stars and planets, we only trust in fools who trust in it. You can pause it just for one second. Okay. So, so I, I put a rap song over it, and the guy's speaking really fast. It's okay if you don't get every word. The concept is God is beyond us. So if, if it's okay if you're like, oh, what did he say? I don't know. I don't know. I'll go ahead. So that's okay. So it's yeah. rap. So. It's okay to feel that way, because I still hear this. I, I, I was doing this, and I'm like, oh, he said that? And then I went through and found the Bible verses, and then I got even more blown away. Okay, so if, if you get a little lost, it's okay. It's okay to be lost a little bit in the bigness of God, okay? No judgment, okay? No judgment zone. Zero judgment. <coughs> yeah. Jackets of amber and stands with universe in hand and our tears in body. 
shadows, um, he collects them, lined in perfect symmetry across the shelves of the throne room. Next to full and accurate account of every electron everywhere and every follicle of hair on our head. Modern psychology would call it obsessive compulsive, but that's only if he ain't had a fan with. I call it love and it's wonderful. Would we would eat the ocean filled and the expanse of the sky be stretched in parchment? Would we line with canvases the walls of our hearts' apartments? Any attempt to capture his image would fall short and everything that he do to me is such a beautiful image. God spoke in the form this earth was sculpted. His poetry producing populations, making constellations with his conversations, gazing at his own creation, proclaiming it was good and there we stood. Fashioned from the dust with authority, he orchestrated organisms in every single cell in every ecosystem. Every creature that dwells, the planets, the planets, the whole expanse, the sky above your head, and the ground where you stand, the clouds and the rain, the soil that soaks it up and feeds tiny seeds. And vegetation proceeds. Infinite wisdom intrinsic within him, self sufficient, intricate systems begin and end with his decisions. Law, out of reach, how we procreated with speech, so it's appropriate for us to be completely in awe. Okay, so, okay, yeah, <laughs> four. <laughs> so the bigness of God. Um, just trying, trying to, trying to grasp this in the beginning, which doesn't necessarily even mean that there was something not before the beginning, which there probably was, and there's cases for that. Beyond time, beyond space, beyond matter, beyond everything, he's the creator of everything, who measures the water in the hollows of his hand, and with the breath of his hand marked off the heavens, right? So with his hands, he can mark off the heavens. So if you want to get a picture, picture, picture that, that last orb at the end, the big round thing, that he can do this with, it, with his hand. He can mark it off with his hand in some way, just, just as a grasp. And then to zoom all the way down, to us. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. So, if there's more heavens past that, picture past that, he stretches even past that, beyond them into a canopy. Does it, does, like, I, I got you, like, I don't mean to lose you, but at the same time, your brain's trying to comprehend it, so it can't, so it's a little bit lost. Is that, is that where we all are, hopefully? I hope, like, I want you to be with me, but also kind of like your brain's like, I can't eat what, and then beyond that, and then he even with his hands do all that, but then he can also, with the hollows and, right, okay? Are we on the same page? Yeah. Yeah? Cool. So, in Job 38, just a couple of things out of Job 38, and there's a lot in Job 38. This is a beautiful verse. Some of the things, he, he laid the earth's foundation, he measured the earth's dimensions, he caused stars and angels to sing, he shuts up the sea, he puts on clouds like a garment, he numbers the clouds, he sets limits for darkness, he commands the morning, he speaks from a whirlwind, he walked on the bottom of the sea, he's seen the deepest, darkest gates of the lowest deep, he reserves the snow and hail for his own purposes, he channels thunderbolts, he creates life for plants, he binds up the constellations, he guides great beasts, he calls out elements, to stand to attention. And then he goes on and on about animals, which is crazy because he has to go down to the concept of an animal because we wouldn't even comprehend. He says, 
He says, I have so much more to tell you, but you can't comprehend it. Part of it is so beyond us. He talks about animals because he probably couldn't talk about um, the different types of stars or the galaxies, which are probably far more complex, but that doesn't even prove anything because the smallest cell is as complex as a galaxy. And he created it all. He created time. Not just that he understands it, but he created it, which is trying to process this, even <laughs> colors. We watched the video on colors. They said some list of the colors that exist, and like the rainbow was this tiny little sliver. It's, it's crazy, people who've been to heaven, I don't know if anyone's been to heaven in this room, they talk about colors we haven't seen. And it forgot that's such a little thing. And the fact that this is what humans can observe and understand, doesn't even mean that that's all that there is. <laughs> That it's so much beyond that. And Ezekiel 1, I love it. I read Ezekiel 1. He's like, uh, it was like a furnace. It was like a fire. It was like bronze. It was, he didn't even have words for it, right? Part of why we have tongues. We don't have words for it. We can't even begin to describe. Well, we, correction, we can begin. Well, I'm, I'm beginning. I'm trying. But it's like a, a sand on the grain of a universe full of sand as big as that universe. Beyond. Because I can only comprehend so far. There's some shrimp. This is cool. There's some. So we. All right. I'll get too sciencey on you. But basically, the concept is, we can see so many, so many colors. And there's some shrimp. There's some shrimp, like a rainbow shrimp. You can look it up. It can see like 17 times the amount of colors we can. Yeah, it's crazy. And dogs can see less, right? And most most men are prone to be colorblind. And most, there are some women who can see more color. That's why my wife holds a dress on me. Which one's, which one, you know, matches? I'm like, I don't know because I can't see as many colors as you scientifically. <laughs> it's actually a, a tetrachromat. It means you can see more colors. Uh, it's really cool. So just that one, like, and like per one, per one of those extra chromes, uh, uh, I'm gonna get super complicated. I don't want to do that because I have to, this to keep me on track. Like each one is like a million more colors, and then it just like exponentially increases from that. So, and God is above that, and God created that, and God commands it. Not only does He create it and He understands it, He commands it. God, God is big, 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 so big. Oh my goodness. All right. It's almost overwhelming. In fact, it is overwhelming. The reckless, overwhelming attributes of God. And then, let's go to the next one. Uh, next slide, please. It's so big! <laughs> He's so big! He's so big, I have its own slide saying that God's big. <laughs> and look at all those explanation points. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. More than enough. Exactly. Oh, okay. oh, there's another one. Okay, so there's one more. So, so this, uh, we'll put on pause real quick. Did, did you like the last video? Was it yeah. a little? Is it okay? To, another one? Because we don't have to. I just like this one. So we're gonna start zooming it down. Okay. God is so big. Explanation points. Own slide. Beyond words. Beyond colors. Beyond sounds. I haven't gotten into sounds. I could a super science nerd on you. This is so beyond. But he brings it back. That's what I'm trying to get. It's so out here, but he brings it back. He's so lofty, so out of reach, but he's available to anyone who calls on him. This, he's so big, but he cares about me. And this is a song, um, and this was one that has some lyrics that are on the screen, so hopefully you can read some. And oh, There's a lot of scripture in here as well. Just that concept. So, so the bigness, and then balance it out with the littleness, and this song kind of does a good job of it. Um, so hopefully you can kind of grasp a little bit of this. It, it's a lot for me to even take, so um, we'll just play that and hopefully uh, it'll kind of clarify a little bit. single 
selling every ecosystem every creature that dwells the planet the plains the whole expanse the sky above your head and the ground where you stand the clouds and the rain the soil that soaks it up and feeds tiny seeds so they sprout and vegetation proceeds infinite wisdom intrinsic within him self-sufficient intricate systems begin and end with his decisions law out of reach how we procreated with speech so it's appropriate for us to be completely in awe Dear God, please help us grasp this concept of how big you are in relation to how much you care. Lord, please come in this moment and continue to minister to our hearts this message that you are speaking. In Jesus' name. I do not own the music or the images, but technically neither did they. Anything that we are creative about was just an offshoot of his creativity. It's so, in the words of the song, lofty. It's so lofty that the God who can hold the, the heavens from the first video in the palm of his hands cares so much about even the flowers and the, the birds. 
and that there's a, there's a, a phrase and there's a couple different phrases. Ken, Ken mentioned a pretty good little nugget. If I could say this right, he says, man may be able to number the seeds in an apple, but only God knows the number of apples in a seed. Like that. <laughs> this, this concept, just beyond, it's so beyond. And beyond that, beyond all those things, he says that we're worth him dying. Him giving up everything. Him giving up literally all of those things and everything. Everything for us. Giving up his life for us. He, there's a, a verse in that song, and I'm going to try and quote it. He says, worth and value are not some innate quality. It, but it is determined by which the length of the owner would be willing to pay to get. Okay? If I say that, church, that, that chair is worth $10, but no one is willing to work pay $10, only $1, it's only worth a dollar. It's only worth what someone's going to pay for it. In the same way that you're only worth what God said he would pay for you. You're his masterpiece. And he said you are worth all of that. Because he gave up himself for you. The bigness of God. But he cares so much about us and about you specifically. Um, the next slide is God wants and values our relationship. I think, yes. It, it, these are just, and this is all throughout Scripture. Now, there are times where God references his might and his power. But more often, he doesn't. When he's talking to Satan, are we all familiar with Satan and God talking in the book of Job? So the real quick recap is God and Satan are speaking. And basically, there's, there's sort of this, this tension there. And from this conversation God and Satan have, God says, have you considered my servant Job? And then a whole whole bunch of things happen. And then God redeems them all. But <laughs> this concept that God is speaking to Satan, one of a celestial, he's a celestial being, right? So he's kind of beyond, he's not, not as beyond as God at all. But he has a better grasp of some of this stuff. There's some things that they don't understand. It's in Galatians. It talks that we're actually to reveal things to them, which is this oh, crazy concept. We reveal things to angels. But there are some things that angels understand um, a little bit better than us. And so of all those things, God sorts through all these things, and he asks Satan, have you considered my servant, Job? He doesn't say, have you considered how I've, I've perfectly put every molecule in every single water droplet, in every single lotion, and then it just, he doesn't go into those details. He doesn't go into, hey, did you ever know how I could, how I could create this galaxy and this one, and actually it's red? You know there's a lot that goes into the fact that you perceive it as red? It, do you know that there's actually a color? Bee? He doesn't go, he says, my servant. When referencing the things that we think he would reference about his bigness, he actually goes back to relationship. And in, in Exodus 3, 6, it's just one of the examples of God introducing himself as the great I am. But he's, he refers to himself as the son of uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He could have said, I'm the God who created everything, who, you know, who knit all the little pieces of your, um, your insights together. I'm the one who created the sun and moved. And, like, and he sometimes does that. But when he's referring to Moses in this moment of convincing, he's saying, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And those words there is the father who laughs at the deceiver. If you look at the meaning of the names, it's also of um, past, present, and future based off the, the breads and the Passover. There's so much meaning to that. But he goes back, either way you look at it, it's a relationship, it's what he does. He refers to himself like that. That's how he introduces himself. Hey, I'm the God of relationship and covenant with you. And your fathers. I'm the God that loves you. And love them. And there's, there's a lot there. If you want to spend your time on something, that's, that's a long one to go into. Also, Romans 5.8. Now, 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 granted, 
these concepts of his bigness and he cares about us was even when we were sinners because that verse is though while we were still sinners Christ died for us so you at your worst point was still worth him giving everything up all of that I, I can't grasp this concept I'm simply presenting it okay but try and grasp it as much as possible so even while we were sinners he said we were worth it it's worth it for the chance and opportunity for us to get to know him like that Now we're we're gonna we're gonna jump to the next one. Philippians is also another good verse for them. Okay, so and then on the smallness, and these are just a couple of verses. There's so many more, and I wish I could really grasp this. How many hairs are on your head, and that he's counted them and he knows them, and you know that that number changes every day, right? Yes. So so to to make this statement, the, the the verse here is that he knows the number of hairs on your head. That's that's the point of this verse. Mm -hmm. So not only does he know it, but he knows it. That means he knew what it was yesterday, he knows what it is today, he knows what it is tomorrow when you when you comb your hair really tough and you pull a couple out. Or you just put your hands. He still knows what they are. He's still up to date with knowing the intricate details of your life and the things about you. Down to the smallest little piece. He spoke and created everything into existence with his power. But he physically came down and spoke with his breath into us while forming us with his hands. He did something active. He just spoke, created everything, and then with us, he took time. He knitted us in the womb. These are things that take time. He cares, time, energy, love. You created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. His concept that not only did he know us, but he had plans for us. He, he, he set a map out for us. He says, you keep track of, this is a cool one. You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You've recorded each one in your book. I would just go down to each one, every single one. He's recorded each one. He says, he has lined his throne room in perfect symmetry with every single tear that you've ever uh, cried in a bottle. And he knows exactly why. And he's going to bring it around full circle to those who love him. And that every time you cried, he was there. Like, oh God, you don't know. Every single time, he took your tears, put them in a bottle. And I bet at some point, he's going to say, hey, these, this is what I made good come from that. Which is partly why we we interact with him because we know these promises that God does create good from these things and that though it's so big he actually cares and if he cares I mean he's gonna do something and if he cares he's gonna do something and he cares intimately for us that means he wants us to call out to him he wants to be involved that's why he talks to people that's why there's so much interaction in the Bible that's why the Bible is not cool because it happened cool because it happens. It's a mirror for our life to see ourselves going on right now. Um, we can go to the next slide. And these are just a couple different verses about calling on him. So he wants the relationship, right? I'm not the guy who just, who just does stuff. I'm the guy who has a purpose and cares. And which is so, these things are so beyond. So, so beyond what we can even imagine is beyond. But he says, call unto me and I will answer you. What? Okay, hold on. He's so beyond that, but if I call unto him, he'll answer me? Now, there are verses about, within Scripture, things to hinder your prayers. So I'm, not, I'm just not going to go into them at the moment. Just know there are things that can separate you uh, in certain ways, and certain things won't get prayed depending on your motivations. But as a whole, this concept of bigness, if you call to him, he will answer you. With your true heart, you truly call to him. Without yourself in the way, these things in the way, he'll answer you. And even sometimes, he'll answer you anyway. Because it was while we were sinners that he answered, that he died for us. So even then, sometimes he does. Because he's that good. He's that good. Call him to me and I will answer you. That alone is like, awesome. That's worth reading the Bible just a couple times. I will tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. They're great. They're un you, could, you, could, you could even search for them, I'll tell you them. What? What? You can't even search for them. It's beyond. It's, it's, you just call on to him. 
with the right heart, and he'll bring you into understanding this thing. That's why I'm saying it's so beyond us, but you can still ask for understanding. You can still ask for these things, because if you ask for wisdom, he'll give it. Right? If you ask for God, he'll give it. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And that's Matthew 7, 7. I'm going to go there real quick. Um, well, I say real quick. I'm never, I shouldn't say real quick as, as a preacher person. Because if I say real quick, I might, I might go out. I'm going to go there. Uh, I'm going to go there. Right? There you go. So that's, I'm going to just go there. And I love the Bible. It's so good. God is good. All right. Does anyone have a version that's different from that? Matthew 7, 7. And sometimes the Amplified Bible has a different version. Um, I'm sure the message is one. This might be my favorite version, so I'm going to say this one last. But if anyone has a different version of uh, Matthew 7, 7. No. Maybe. Yours? You know there's a version of the, of the Bible called the Hawaii Pigeon Bible? It's amazing. Now that version is going to be different from this one. But, um, that's a side note. If you ever want like a very interesting version, that's an interesting version to listen to. Yeah, passion. Yeah. Ask and the gift is yours. Seek and ye will discover. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Every... For every persistent one will get what he asks for. Every persistent seeker will discover what he longs for. And everyone who knocks persistently will one day find an open door. It's good. The message? Yeah. Don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This isn't a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. If your child asks for bread, do you trick him into sawdust? If he asks for fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of such a thing. Yeah. Anything else a, a little different than that worth sharing? So within the Hebrew context of uh, this culture, and there are other cultures like this, but basically you, you insist a lot. And you insist from the one who can provide. And within the Hebrew context, a lot of, and this, this is a cool study if you ever want to do it, is the tenses of Hebrew words. Because a lot of times within English, we kind of say knock, right? But when the Hebrew, it may be knock and keep knocking and keep, no, 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 like seriously, keep continually, you know, and then sometimes th this kind of concept of tenses is going on. And that's what's happening here. This is, um, it's not a Jewish study Bible, but it's close, so it has a little bit of the Hebrew in there. It says, you must regularly ask, and it will be given to you. You must continually seek, and you will find. You must knock habitually, and it will be open to you. Each one of those could be expounded on, right? I'm just going to say it one more time. You must regularly ask, and it will be given to you. You must continually seek, and you will find. And you must knock habitually, and it will be open to you. That means the God that is above the heavens and above everything we can imagine, that has the idea and concept for everything before it exists and where it's going, says that not only if you ask, that he'll listen and he'll answer you, but he will give you things according to his will as well. And that as you regularly ask, he's regularly listening. That alone is a miracle. Beyond the fact that he'll answer you, the fact that he's listening he knows the hair on your head. He knows the things that are going on. He know, That's why part, there's verses in Scripture and Lucas says, don't worry about these things. He knows you need these things. But you still ask, why would Jesus pray these things? Your kingdom come, your will be done. As it is in heaven, he's, he's literally living it. He's, he's doing it. Why would he? Because he's giving us the mind. Says, when you pray, how should you pray? Jesus, how do you pray? You, you ask and you're persistent. You, and you're, you're habitual with it, and you, and you stand on it, and you say, this is what I know to be your will in my life, or in this person's life, or whatever. And you stand on it, and you keep asking. 
It says, talks about wisdom in James. It says he'll give to you without reproach, without rebuke, without making you feel bad. It's you're not you're not going to make God sad by asking for things. If, be willing to be wrong because God may pro, say, "Hey, this thing's not good for you," but just understand that you are you are ex expected to ask regularly for things because He's the only one that gets it. And if you're asking Him, you understand that He's the one that can give it. You're giving Him honor by asking Him. It's do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Don't be anxious about everything. Right? And this is also uh, an idea of heart posture, because there is a heart posture here. There's a willingness that, God, you are God, I am not. It's okay if you say no, but I'm still demanding this until you say no. Thanks. I'm thankful for what I have. And there's different verses here. But in this heart, in the right heart, you are to continually ask and petition and say why. But also say, this is what I believe, God, according to your words. And that's part of what, what you do when you, when you bring things up to God. He talks, you talk to God and bring him to remembrance. It says that you bring him into remembrance it's, uh, and let us argue our case together. In Isaiah 43. So you bring him to remembrance, you bring up what he has, and you argue the case together, because it's your case collectively if you're praying for his will. Your will be done. So you're on the same page with God, working with God to have something accomplished. It becomes our case. And if God is for us, who cares who's against us? That's my favorite uh, uh, version of that verse. Romans 8, 31. If God is for us, who cares? You're on God's side. You're just trying to figure out how to do it. It's like, God, this is what I believe. I believe this. I believe this about this person. This is the scripture. I'm believing for that. Even if he doesn't, it's okay. Right? Esther, listen, if you don't do this, God will still do it because that's his plan. If you don't, help will come up from somewhere else. But I want to use you. Ezekiel, listen, I didn't want to do this. I just wanted someone to stand in the gap. Uh... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Listen, God is going to do this. We're petitioning God to do this, but if he doesn't, it's okay. But we are petitioning this because we believe this is God and we can stand on Scripture that this is God. If he doesn't, it's okay. But if he does this, 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 and you petition, you petition, you push. And then just, a re just on the same note of the right heart posture, woe to those who argue with and quarrel with God. So you're not, you're not, you have to demand in a respectful way. Okay? But he wants to give us good things. He wants to bless us. He wants to interact with us. Of the, all the bigness and the greatness of the universe, he comes back and says, oh, my servant. Of all the great things that he's done, he says, oh, I'm the God of promise. I'm the God of covenant. I'm the God of relationship. Of all these things, it comes back to us. Of all the bad stuff you did, he still died for you in those worst moments. Uh, next verse. All right, next uh, slide. And that's a little bit about what I spoke to is you petition God on behalf of God for what God wants, assuming that God will give you the desires of your heart because you've asked God that your desires become his desires. And so these things happen. So in Genesis 16, when God says, I'm going to destroy the entire city, you can haggle with him based off of who he is. Based off of the characters of God, you can haggle with him. Do we know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? God says he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham comes to him and says, don't destroy it if we can find at least a couple righteous people. And they go and they haggle down the numbers. And it, it actually went from no one surviving to his family surviving. Um, and then we see the story in Exodus 32. God, uh, Moses is on the mountain talking to God. He comes down and everyone has just blasphemed in crazy ways and neglected their God. You know, the first commandment is, I am the, I am the Lord your God. And then it goes on to that. He took you out of Egypt. If you go into to, uh, Numbers, I believe, the first commandment is actually countering this, because they said, this is the golden calf who brought us out of Egypt. And the first commandment, actually, if you follow the first commandment wholly, he goes on and talks about, I'm the Lord your God, and he talks about, you'll have no other gods before me, and he talks about his relationship with what he did in Egypt. So in order to properly obey the first commandment, you have to understand that he's the God of relationship and the God who did those things that he said he would do back in the day, and he'll do it again. Yeah, I don't want to. Okay. 
And then Matthew 15 as well, back, back to these, these concepts. Um, uh, Matthew 15. There was two different ones here. One of them was, was the, the lady who, um, she goes to Jesus and no one really wants to talk to her. And she's petitioning for, for these, uh, was it healing? And, uh, uh, forgive me, I, I, yeah, for her son, for her son. She's petitioning for something she believes is godly. As she goes to Jesus, and she's petitioning for this thing. And they're basically, the, the, those around her are ridiculing her. Say, why, why would we waste the bread to dogs? And she's still like, no, even the dogs get crumbs. She stands on what she believes, and she asks, and she persists. Not one person came physically, did all the, all the work to come to Jesus, petition for something that was godly, and didn't get it. Everyone did. And it came in different ways, though. So God's ways are higher than our ways. Well, you petition, you call, you get there. It's the right mode of all these things. Your heart posture is right. You should expect to believe it. You should expect to have it. You should expect for these things to happen. And then, oh, and then part of that whole bread concept and even the crumbs get the bread, another concept is um, knocking on the door of a neighbor in the, mi in the middle of the night for bread. Now, you're asking for bread for someone else. So you could petition God for, for bread for someone else, for something for someone else, for petitions for someone else that are godly petitions, and you bang. I mean, so one of the examples is it talks about scriptures like banging on the door of a wedding feast while people are in their party, and you bang so loud that everyone can hear you. You have to get above the noise because you need that bread so badly. You are representing Christ, and you have to provide them with the bread of life. And so you, you are petitioning God for the thing that that person needs. You believe that God is going to give them, and you petition and stand in the gap so God provides that for that person because that's the only way that that person can experience you in that way. And you petition for it, and you knock, and you keep knocking, and he's going to hear every knock. He's going to hear every single time that you seek him. He's going to open it up to you. And then the last slide. Have I, are we still on the same page? Even if we don't feel like it. Jeremiah 33. Call on me, and I will answer you. Romans 8.31. If God is for you, who cares? Who cares if you don't see it? Hebrews talks about that too. He's, he goes and he talks about, um, in Hebrews 2, like 7 through 9, he talks about everything's under your feet. I don't see it under your feet, but everything's under your feet. You proclaim that everything's under your feet. It doesn't matter what's against it. doesn't matter what I see. It's still under you. The God that did all this stuff cares about me. And he wants to do his will in my life and in those around me's life. We, we constantly come to our, our, our God and we say, God, what big problems we have. We should go to our problem and say, hey, problem, what big God I have, right? <laughs> this, this concept, and um, I, I had someone tell me this. It's either Peter or Dave. They said, listen, if you really fear God, you can't fear anything else. You can't. If you understand who God is, this is a, a gentleman who sees and the prophetic, and he can see a lot of scary things, and he notices a lot of stuff that most of us probably get freaked out on. He says, listen, I see this stuff, but even if you don't, you can see the, the I mean, there was shootings this week. I mean, all of these terrible, terrible things that we see that really are not part of his plan. But he says, listen, if you could really see God, you wouldn't be afraid of those things. You'd be the first one on the lines praying for those. You'd be standing and saying, I, I see that. Not everything's on your feet. Or not, I don't see everything under my feet, but everything is under your feet, so I'm going to declare that it's under your feet. Hebrews 2, I think 6 through 9, those are those verses. It's there. Because you're working on behalf of us. God is not slow as some consider slowness, but he's patient, willing that none should perish. So maybe your promise isn't coming true for God because there's some other pieces that have to go into effect so someone else is saved. That's a great reason. God, you can delay some of my promises if that means people are coming into your kingdom. James 2, it talks, uh, Scripture talks about, uh, he, he's wanting us to run this race of endurance. He says the patience endurance creates maturity in us. So sometimes we're waiting because he's enduring us to even withhold it, to be able to take it, be able to stand it. With most promises come a lot of pressure. It's just kind of how it is. With, to whom much is given, much is required. 
as Spider-Man says, with great responsibility, with great power comes great responsibility. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You may have to close up. Oh. Okay. We're getting the other. All right. I got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. The bigness of God. Okay, so we go from the bigness of how big God is and that we come all the way down that he cares. And he cares so much. And I know Pastor Jim has some, has some desires of his heart. One of them is for the building. You know, and some of you guys have prayers for people getting healed or different opportunities or whatever it is. Petition, petition, petition. Find scripture that backs it up. Bring it to his remembrance. He is big. He's lofty. So understand that if you don't get it, it's okay not to get it. And come with that, God, I understand you're beyond everything. I understand you're beyond comprehension, but this is what I believe based off of your scripture, and this is a prayer request, so I am petitioning you, and every time I speak, you hear, and I trust that you will change my heart if it's a wrong heart posture. But though you are big, I know you care, and you care about this. He is lofty, but he is loving. And I could go on and on about that, but that's, that's the point. He's so big. Get how big he is. So sometimes we don't understand, but bring it back. Bring it back that he cares and he wants to do these things for us according to his will. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I wanted to to say it in some cute way, but we don't have time. Um, just wanted to let you guys know some be some of the first to know that we are expecting. So that's exciting. So um, that's one of God's promises, and one day maybe we can share a little more about that. But that's. Just something that I'm like, wow, God, you're. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fine. Thank you so much. That's really good.